Did you know there was once a black-owned airline? Well, there absolutely was, and it operated for over two decades. Today on In the Black, I'm talking about Wheeler Airlines. Wheeler Airlines was named after its founder, Warren Wheeler. He was born on October 1st, 1943, in Durham, North Carolina, to proud parents John and Selena Wheeler. Father John was a businessman and the eventual president of Mechanics and Farmers Bank, which at one time was the fourth largest African-American-owned bank in the country. Warren's mother, Selena, was a librarian serving as the director of the Durham Colored Library. Under her direction, this branch thrived, becoming the center of the African-American community Warren developed his interest in flying in 1957 while accompanying his sister Julia on her flying lesson in a four-seat Cessna 172. After that, he was hooked. But Warren didn't just dream about flying. He made it happen, earning his private pilot's license the next year at age 15. He continued his scholastic path, graduating from high school and attending North Carolina A&T College, now University, in Greensboro. Warren studied electrical engineering, but he wasn't nearly as passionate about that as he was about aviation. He found it so boring that he became a college dropout. Following his collegiate departure, Warren's immediate plan was to earn his commercial pilot's license. However, racial segregation was very prevalent in the southern states in the early 1960s, and no pilot training center would accept him. But Warren was determined he relocated to Ardmore, Oklahoma to attend the American Flyer School, becoming its first African-American student, as this school was willing to see what he could do. In 1962, at the age of 19, Warren received his multi-engine rating and commercial pilot's license and was the first African-American graduate of the American Flyer School. Armed with his new qualifications, Warren returned to North Carolina with intentions of securing an airline job. Unfortunately, in 1962, there were few opportunities for African Americans in aviation. Warren was going to have to find another path to the sky, and that's exactly what he did. With financial support from his family, Warren Wheeler bought a small plane. He needed to earn an income while accumulating his flight hours and solved both parts of this issue using that plane to open his own flying school at the Horace Williams Airport in Chapel Hill, North Carolina. From there, he began teaching white students from the University of North Carolina to fly. Another revenue stream, as well as more flying experience, was gained from Warren starting a charter service, thus optimizing usage of his newly acquired airplane. After three years of charters and flight instructing, Warren finally had enough hours to apply for a major airline. However, he was unable to get an interview with anyone. The rejection was claimed to have been due to his youth and inexperience, but it was the 1960s, and this was North Carolina, so you do the math. This story may very well have ended right here, had it not been for... Call the governor! Get the governor on the phone! Braden's getting a reprieve from the governor. Thanks, governor. Okay, well, it wasn't quite that dramatic, but it did involve a call from North Carolina Governor Terry Sanford. He had been a passenger on Wheeler's charter service several times and was quite impressed with Warren's pilot skills. The governor called Tom Davis, who was the president of Piedmont Airlines, and gave Wheeler a glowing recommendation. As a result, Wheeler was permitted to take the airline's pilot exam. He passed the test and in March of 1966 became not only Piedmont Airlines' first African-American pilot, but also one of the youngest pilots in his new airline's history. Wheeler flourished in his new career, yet still had the itch to do more. In 1969, after three years of flying for Piedmont, Wheeler took a sabbatical from his airline. He was then approved for a $36,000 SBA loan which he used to start the Wheeler Flying Service, the parent company of Wheeler Airlines. Wheeler's business was to be an air cargo and aircraft maintenance service that also ran charters on a part-time schedule. It initially had the dubious distinction of having more aircraft than employees. He hadn't built a brand yet, so people were hesitant to go with an unknown entity. 
At first, people were reluctant to try us. We were a new business, and quite naturally, they were skeptical. They didn't think we'd be around long. But Wheeler's philosophy was, whatever it takes, something he demonstrated time and again. Once his leave of absence ended, Warren continued flying 65 hours a month for Piedmont. This not only allowed Wheeler to keep the lights on, but ultimately helped Wheeler Airlines to become a feeder airline for Piedmont. And since Warren flew for them, he had first-hand knowledge of the gaps in Piedmont's schedule, as well as a direct line of communication to the powers that be. Wheeler Airlines ultimately would grow its fleet to 11 single and twin-engine propeller aircraft. To fill these planes, Warren started hiring people that bought into the whatever-it-takes mindset. All Wheeler employees, including the pilots, routinely helped with selling tickets and loading bags. Wheeler timed his entry into the aviation game well. By the end of the 60s, air travel, previously something only the affluent could afford, had become more accessible to the middle class. This also included African Americans. By 1973, Wheeler Airlines was established as a link between several North Carolina cities. Much like how Southwest Airlines got their start by serving as a link between Texas cities. The charter service, on the other hand, was now capable of flying anywhere in the continental U.S. As a result, Wheeler Airlines was flying an average of 208 passengers per month. Remember, their planes only had a capacity of six passengers, so this was no insignificant feat. The airline's growth would continue from there. In 1975, Wheeler Airlines grossed $380,000, which would be the equivalent of over $2.1 million today. This was due in part to Wheeler securing contracts with several companies in the Research Triangle Park. But his big catch was Burroughs Welcome, a pharmaceutical company. With their headquarters in Durham and a factory 100 miles away in Greenville, they needed a reliable way to travel between the two locations, and Wheeler Airlines was perfectly suited for this. Because of the challenges he'd faced while earning his wings, Warren wanted to give other African Americans the opportunity to work in aviation, an area that was not particularly diverse. In 1976, according to the Airline Pilots Association, less than 100 of an estimated 37,000 pilots were black. Wheeler would do his part to increase that number, including hiring Jill Elaine Brown. Initially brought on as a ticket agent, she eventually became a pilot and went from Wheeler Airlines to Texas International in 1978, thus becoming the first African-American female pilot for a major airline. By 1976, Wheeler Airlines was up to 1,000 passengers per month and expanded their routes to include Asheville, North Carolina, as well as Virginia and New York's LaGuardia Airport. To maintain his hectic schedule, Warren had apartments in Durham, North Carolina and Norfolk, Virginia. The steady increase in revenue allowed Wheeler to purchase a building, which was used to start a minority training program through the State Division of Community Employment. Because although Warren wanted to have more African Americans in aviation, he also wanted the best pilots. I always have in the back of my mind that I want to hire blacks. Fortunately, more blacks are becoming competent pilots but I can't hire someone who is not the most qualified applicant because of color. I believe in hiring people on merit, though anyone who pretends not to be prejudiced in favor of his own race is kidding himself. By the 1980s, Wheeler Airlines was averaging over 40,000 passengers annually, and Warren expanded his airline's fleet to include several Beach 99 jet props, which held 15 passengers, and even a Fairchild F-27 turboprop which seated 40. He also began Wheeler Regional Airlines, whose main purpose was to transport canceled paper checks from banks to processing centers and also transporting checks to Federal Reserve banks. These extra revenue streams were vital to the success of Wheeler Airlines, which was constantly competing with not only new regional carriers looking to reduce Wheeler's slice of the pie, but also racism. One particular competitor, Lincoln County-based Sunbird Airlines, was very blatant in this regard. See, before the 1990s, online booking wasn't a thing yet, so many people used travel agents to schedule their flights. As Wheeler explains, So what the guy that owns Sunbird would do is, 
He would go into the travel agencies, and we'd be flying some of the same routes between Charlotte and Raleigh-Durham and places like that. And the travel agent would say, well, we put some people on Wheeler Airlines last weekend. And he would say, you do realize that Wheeler Airlines is owned by a black person, don't you? And that's all it would take. Next time, those people would be on Sunbird. Unfortunately, this would not be the end of Wheeler's challenges. Three factors proved to be a devastating combination to the airline. First was the earlier acquisition of the turboprop airplane. It was an expense that Wheeler really didn't need to take on. It was a mistake, and it took us down. And we didn't have funding to correct it. So, that was the end of it. The second factor was simply the progression of banking practices. Electronic means of transmitting check data were starting to be developed, and after the Monetary Control Act of 1980, there was increasing competition between the Fed and private sector payment providers, which advanced the usage of automated clearinghouse payments instead of physical checks. Thus, a key part of Wheeler's courier service, hauling canceled paper checks from banks to processing centers, simply ceased to be a need. Wheeler himself conceded that the check transportation was the backbone of our business. And, well, it's difficult to stand without a backbone. The third and final nail in the Wheeler Airlines coffin was the rapid changes in the airline business. By 1986, larger airlines were merging with commuter airlines, and the larger carriers would then take over the lucrative routes that had been serviced by the commuter airlines they just merged with. This trend proved too much for Wheeler to overcome. And in October of 1985, Wheeler Flying Service, the parent company of the airline, filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy, ceasing operations in 1991. Even after grounding his own airline, the rapid consolidation of other carriers would continue to affect Warren. All this time, he was flying for Piedmont Airlines. And on August 5th, 1989, they were bought by US Air. Wheeler would fly five more years with U.S. Air until retiring in 1994. Now completely on the ground, Warren discovered he could now focus on other endeavors. This included the Airline Young Aviators of Durham, a nonprofit aviation program that teaches science and engineering to teens. In April of 2022, Warren was inducted into the North Carolina Aviation Museum's Hall of Fame. Warren Wheeler, a man who was in the sky and in the black.